Hi everybody, thank you for joining me this week. I want to talk to you today about 360 degree pictures and videos. And these are fantastic tools to really immerse your students in the content of your course and increase the level of interactivity with the content. So I'm gonna spend some time in a sandbox course that I created for you. And I have the link to this actually in comments if you want to download this course and put it in your own instance. Then that link is in the description below. So I've made videos in the past about cameras and hardware that you can use to create 360 content. And that's not really what I'm gonna focus on today. If you'd like to see my review of hardware, then I'll put a link up there. But do be mindful that this technology is advancing pretty much every day, every month. There's something new. And so year over year, there's a lot of advancements and a lot of the tools that I reviewed have since gotten upgrades. As well with all the competition, we've also seen drops in prices, which is good for us. For the consumer end of things, the landscape of 360 degree pictures and videos, uh, it's great for us. So let's talk about the platforms, the vehicles that you can use to get your content into a Canvas environment. Assuming that you've already evaluated the hardware and that you've taken your pictures or acquired them somehow, how do you get them to your students at this point? So I have a module to discuss these platforms and I'm just gonna go through page by page and we're gonna look through this. Now the first one, this is called Insta360. Now Insta360, they make their own brand of cameras and then they have proprietary software that they use for their cameras to host the images on the internet. Now you do have to pay for their products in order to really utilize that software. But the reason I'm starting with this as opposed to some of the free options is that I can demonstrate the difference in spherical equi rectangular pictures. And so I know that's a mouthful, but if you look at this, this is a picture from the Grand Floridian, and this is a fisheye view. And you can see around the edges, it kind of distorts a little bit. And you can even see some curves in both the horizon line as well as the elements. And if I move it around, you can see it really gets rounded. That horizon line rounds up. That's a fisheye. And by default, most of these cameras operate with fisheye lenses. However, you can change that from fisheye view to planet view, for example. Now I'm standing on a tiny planet, Earth. And you can even make that into a ball. If I wanted to put my picture into a ball, I have yet to find an application for that, but it's interesting. And finally, the normal view. Normal has to really zoom in on the content. And so that can be a drawback right there because this was taken uh, around sunset and so the picture is already kind of dark and it's grainy because there's not a lot of light and so it makes it a little bit pixelated I would say grainy but it makes it so this is more true to like a, a real view but this isn't the view that the camera captured the camera captures in fisheye so this is true to the format of the picture as opposed to if I hop back over to normal this is typically what I'm more comfortable with sharing with students. The drawback is since it's way zoomed in, they're going to have to really be navigating around in order to get that content, you know, that image. So I have a few other examples of here's fisheye in a different place. And here's some in indoor lighting. And you can see I can zoom out a little bit, which I don't find any application for really maybe zoom in a little bit so that you get a little bit less of that distortion around the edges. It's still there a little bit. So all of these images were captured using the Insta360 platform and I just upload them and then embed them right into Canvas. And you can see this Canvas page works very nicely with them. I can also have videos as well. So here's what that video would look like and I can change the modes of the video from fisheye to the tiny planet to the ball and then finally to the normal view which doesn't look super great now granted this was a relatively low light scenario this was indoors it's really stretching the boundaries of you know what the pixels can handle I could bump that up to 720 but I find that it doesn't really make all that much of a difference so if you're using 360 videos you'll probably want to get a professional source. Just be mindful that you might not have so much detail in the video. So now I want to jump to a different platform and that's ThingLink. ThingLink is fantastic. All educators should know about ThingLink and if you haven't got an account yet, then go over to thinglink.com and sign up right away for an account. 
and start playing around. There's so many applications. Today I'm gonna to look specifically at the 360 applications. So I'll go ahead and make this full screen so that I can see I'm still in Canvas, but I'm full screen. And then I created my pictures here. In my case, I went to Magic Kingdom and I wanted to stroll around the park, so I took pictures all around the park. And then I can go to another thing link so I can tie them together and then I can create something of a walking tour. In this case, it's a walking tour of Disney. And so I can look around on the picture in the upper right hand corner. I can see where I'm gazing and I can even see other hot spots. And so I'll click on one of these hot spots and it'll take me to a different place in the park. And so this way I can take this walking tour of Disney and this might be your campus. It might be a thing of interest, a place of interest for the content of your course. And you can take your students on a virtual field trip and you can have other hot spots as well. My hotspots are just simply taking the user to a different place in the park, like a walking tour, but you can have a text hot spot or another video or another image. You can have all kinds of things. Now you'll notice in the bottom, there's also a VR headset. If I click on that, it's not gonna do anything for me, but if you happen to have a headset like this, you can drop your phone in there and then you can take a tour. And so you would actually put it on your face and then you can look around and so it's much more interactive that way you would actually change the screen by looking around and there's even some buttons and some volume i have some headphones if there's music and so it makes it to be more of an immersive experience right now i can't utilize the vr component because i'm on a computer and i'm not on a vr headset so again thinglink you would upload your 360 video or picture into the thinglink platform and then you can grab embed code and embed it right into canvas it may be that you have to pay for a premium account with ThingLink to use their 360 video feature, but in my opinion, it would be worth it. If you have application for 360, then ThingLink is a great route to go. Probably the most free route to go would be uploading to YouTube. And there might be privacy concerns, it just depends. You can upload your videos to YouTube and then set them to unlisted. So here's some examples of videos that I uploaded to YouTube, and I can go ahead and play those. And then you can see the video I'll maximize to full screen and then I can look around. So yeah, it's pretty fun. And it just plays from beginning to end, no frills, right in Canvas. Now, interestingly, YouTube also supports 3D. So if you have a camera that's not only 360 degrees, but also is 3D, so virtual reality, such as the Views Plus, then you can upload that file to YouTube and YouTube actually recognizes that it's 3D and it will recognize if you have one of those VR headsets or maybe an Oculus or something. So if I were to play this, I'm not on a 3D headset, I'm not on VR, and so it's just gonna play it normally, but otherwise what it would do is it splits the screen and so your right eye and your left eye would be looking at something different and that would give you the sense of depth. You can focus on things that are far away or things that are close. So it really creates a much more immersive experience. Now the next platform that you can consider is Facebook. And there's a lot of debate and education about whether to use Facebook or not in your classes. And I'll leave that debate for a different video, but just know that you can upload 360 videos to Facebook and 360 pictures and they will render in Canvas if you embed them. So these are just a couple of examples here. And so you can see the interactivity and you know so that's one option now for this platform this is kuula and now we're venturing into the realm of real estate realtors love 360 videos because how better to showcase a real estate property than to show them a 360 view of the kitchen or take them on a walking tour of the house so that they can see all of the corners so kuula is a real estate platform but you can get a free account and you can upload your pictures Here's another Disney picture, and this embeds right into Canvas. I can maximize it for full screen, and here's another example. So yeah, there's plenty of possibility with this platform as well. Borrowing another idea from the realm of real estate and realtors is this platform called Orbix 360. This is another realtor platform, but it's interesting because you can actually have different scenes. And of course, if you're showcasing a house, then this would be the master bedroom and the ensuite and the kitchen and the main area, but we can use that in education as well. So here's a 360 picture and here we're in Adventureland and I can see some different scenes down below and I can hop to a different scene. So here we're at the main castle and then I can see another scene right here. Now we're at Main Street USA and so I can jump from one scene to another. 
It does leave a watermark because I have the free version and I didn't pay for it, but this functionality is available even if you're just using the free version. So I think Orbix 360 is an interesting platform. It's worth looking into. Of course, I could make this bigger. I just modify the HTML code. I could make it 100% wide and maybe 600 pixels tall, whatever I chose. So I'm going to lament before I go to the next one, Google used to have a really good um, platform called Google Tour Creator, as well as Google Tour Builder. And they discontinued those as of this recording. It was last summer, they discontinued that platform completely. And that was really sad, but there's another platform that's kind of taken their place. And I think it's really interesting. It's called Story Spheres. And this is different than the other platforms that I've showed you because you can get your 360 image, but then you can embed sounds. You can embed MP3 files throughout. And so that gives it a really interesting experience as well. So here's an example of a picture and I have some audio and it's playing. And then when I look to a different part of the picture, you can see the audio goes away. And then I get another audio that plays. And maybe I'll look over here and there's nothing. And if I look back, and that could be voiceover, it could be music, it could be something thematic, probably you want voiceover. And so that's kind of fun, and that you can make it more interactive in that way. And it's not something intrusive, like that they have to click on it, which is another layer of interactivity, but this is just seamless. Another player in the edtech realm is this, called, this platform called cospaces.io. So here I have my interaction. I'm going to go ahead and play and I can look around just like a lot of the other platforms. You can add other elements as well. So I think CoSpaces is unique in that you can put assets on the page, similar to the hotspots that you might see in ThingLink. I'm going to point out some honorable mentions now. We're going to look at Flickr. Now Flickr is an image repository platform. You've probably heard of it and explored it by now. And Flickr can host 360 images, but I prefer not to do that in Canvas because they don't embed into Canvas. The best that you can do is you can put a thumbnail and have the students click on that. It'll open up a new tab and then they can see the image there. You can even create albums of 360 images and then they would click on each of the images in the album. But again, I prefer my interactions to live right into Canvas. And so that's why I mentioned this as an honorable mention because you can put the thumbnails there, but I would prefer the interactivity to live in the Canvas environment. Now this is a good tool for you. It's not something that the students would be able to see, but there's a little bit of JavaScript. And so you can embed this onto your Canvas page. And what it does is it allows you to drop an image, a 360 image right onto the page, and you can preview what that would look like. Now when I refresh or save the page, then it's gonna go back to the original. So it's not something that I can put into my course, but if you just want to preview what it looks like, then this is a, a good lightweight tool for that. Momento 360 is another platform that I believe we borrow from the real estate industry, and it doesn't have any more features than the other platforms that we've talked about, other than you can blow it up to full screen, you can look at it in VR. It does have a watermark on it, unfortunately, but it's a fine tool, and so it gets the job done, I would say. Another honorable mention is Panel Raven, and you can get a free trial. I got a free trial, my free trial expired, and so I don't have anything to show you, but it is a good tool. It's another real estate tool. And if you really want to get into 360, then it's worth at least exploring because it might work for you. I'm going to return now to the YouTube video page, the YouTube examples, because if you're just getting started with 360 video, then really YouTube's probably the best place to start. So just upload your video into YouTube and then you can embed it onto a canvas page. And it's a great way to get your feet wet. If you're looking at just pictures, just images of 360 landscapes, then Orbix 360 is a lot of fun because it has the different scenes. Story Spheres is also pretty fun. And I always have a soft spot for ThingLink. I think that what they're doing with their platform is great as well. So anyway, if you like this and you want to see more reviews like this, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you can get those notifications. I appreciate all of my subscribers. You all mean a lot to me. And until next time, Happy Digi Nanonin!